everyone, and welcome down to episode 115 of the Down South Photo Show with me, Brendan Waits, here in Ocean Grove, Victoria, Australia. And the guy on your other screen or in your other ear down in Hobart, Tasmania, Australia, it's Cam Blake. Hello, Cameron. Hello, Brendan. You make me laugh every time we do this because yeah, well. just before you press record, what was it today? I haven't even looked at the notes. Bugger it. Let's right. just press That's record. Right. Let's just let's just get into a show. We know what we're doing. We're 115 <laughs> episodes in. We should know what we're doing by now. Surely 115 episodes in, we've got over 800 subscribers. We're getting Surely. there. We are getting there. We're clawing our way tooth and nail to 800 because our wonderful people who subscribe and watch and share the channel around are doing a great job of doing just that. So thank you very much to all our loyal followers, listeners. And if you're new to the show, well, sit back, relax, and let us do all the talking as we um, dissect another interesting photographic topic on the there's, show. Tonight. There's Actually, this week's been a bit of an interesting one. We've got a few topics there. We that, have. Uh, that are quite interesting. We might not get through all of them, but True. there's a few things going on in the photographic world and uh, yes. it is good to see. But yeah, big shout out to everyone. Thank you. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. It's free. We're not going to yeah. bombard you with bullshit apart from the show. You know, you just got to subscribe That's and then right. you'll get you get a notification every week. It's good. Exactly. Um, mm. There's a big old subscribe button just hanging down there somewhere going probably over that way it if is if we had if we had the technology we'd probably pop it up here on the screen like yeah press it here hey and... mate can i just say two weeks ago when we said i was going to put a card on the screen that it actually worked. worked yeah it did so did, did anyone click on it yeah, can, i don't know even know if i can tell if anyone clicked on it, but the main thing is it was there it was there the start. i'll tell you what i was actually very surprised it was there <laughs> uh you did Thanks well us. if well you're done. listening to the show on the podcast channels thank you welcome aboard um we do encourage you to pop over to the YouTube channel occasionally to have a look at our backgrounds or if we throw up photos, particularly when our comps are decided mm. as well, to yep. jump on and have a look at the winning comp photos. Uh, speaking of, how's that for a segue? Um, our March comp is well and truly mm. up and running. It is. And the theme is Blue Hour. I think yeah. we've hit something like 60 or 70 entries already. Thank you, yeah. everyone, for commenting. And the way you enter your Blue Hour photo is via our Facebook page, which is linked right yeah. below yeah i'm looking through the entries again we said it last week it's going to be hard yep um there is some great shots there's some beautiful moon, moon shots there's some yeah mountain shots there's some uh what else we got some uh sort of modern architecture shots some Very coastal cool. shots we've got a lot of cool stuff in here yeah um so yeah that's going to be hard that's a nice one that one of the would be awesome if we put out a calendar of all our monthly themes, we could put a calendar together. And then we take the profits and just screw everyone else over. Yeah. Well, yeah. we did all the work. I mean, come on. Yeah. We give, we'll we say photo taken by. Let's you know, do, the, <laughs> do the right thing. We'll give them credit. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Because photographers can live on credit, right? Yeah, yeah. That pays the bills. That was a, that was a, uh, a topic from a previous episode. Yes, um, it was. Backgrounds, Cameron, pushing right along. Uh, okay, first. Go on. Why not? Um, so this is, um, this is a this uh, shot is from a plane on the way back from the southwest of Tasmania the other week, and in the foreground you've got Dewitt Island, D E W I W T Island, which is part of the Matt Syker, um Island Group, which has Australia's most southernest uh, lighthouse on Matsuka Island, and it's actually manned. You can actually go and spend six months there on this tiny. It's one of those little tiny islands out the back. You can spend six months there uh, looking after the lighthouse, doing weather reports for the Bureau. I think they've got a veggie patch you've got to keep going, um, but it is totally isolated and they get the full brunt of the southwest squalls that come through. It's not unusual for them to have you know, in excess of 130, 140k gusts there on a regular basis. But uh, we flew over it the other day, just had a nice bit of light on that little island there and um, it was uh, a beautiful little flight home. It got a little bit bumpy closer to Hobart, but uh, we went along the coast and yeah, it was like shooting fish in a barrel. Just point the camera out the window and, you know, away we went. There's a, a little bit of cropping, a little bit of straightening up of horizons and things like that. But, um, yeah, it's a great little flight home. And I'm actually going up there tomorrow. I head back. Oh, look at me. I'm really bright. Um, we go, yeah, well, we go back down there tomorrow, actually. So um, um, can, can you do me a favor and cover your face again? Because I just want to I just want to have another look at that awesome background of yours. Now, yeah. How good's the light on the, the peak mm. basically right in the middle? Yeah, that's uh, that's what caught my eye. I'm like, oh, that's good. It's just it wasn't much, but it was just enough light to, I guess, make a bit of a difference on that peak, give it a bit of form. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, with the rest of it in the background, like there's actually an island all the way at the back as well, right on the horizon in the haze. 
Um, it's a really cool, dramatic um, flight home along that coastline. But yeah, when I saw that light, that's exactly what I caught. So uh, when I shot this, I, I usually shoot things about a stop under on my exposure. So aperture priority, I think I was shooting like at 5.6 ISO, maybe 400 along the way. And then I had a set to minus one purely just to keep those little bits of light that are, are catching the hills and stuff just to keep them a bit under control. Um, it just makes your editing a bit easier when you get back. Um, but yeah, it was a really cool flight. Um, it's a great little spot. So I do like it a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. got, um, it does, uh, reek of the th- it does <laughs> reek of the three capes, doesn't it? That, that well, whole coastline. Uh, yeah. It's not far really. Like no. as, as the crow flies, it's on the same sort of, I don't know, it's latitude or whatever it is. So, yes. um, yeah. Uh, but it is, um, it is an amazing flight and, uh, lucky enough to get to do it again tomorrow. It looks like the weather's going to be okay. But Brilliant. We were flying back the other day. So these guys fly by line of sight. They can't, they don't use intimate flight. So you've got to be able to see, I think it's five nautical miles they're going to be able to see. So they usually take us back over inland to get back to Hobart, but it was a bit cloudy. So we came back along the coast and I'm okay in small planes. I think I said this before. I get a little bit nervy. I get a bit sweaty if you go bumpy, bumpy, but mm-hmm. overall I'm okay. And then we're flying along the coast and then, I was expecting them to keep sort of flying over the water, just keep going around the contours of the coast. And the pilot's like, oh, it looks like we can go over that mountain. Let's just go over there. He started climbing up to 5,000 feet. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, we're climbing up. Everything's getting smaller, smaller. And we get over the top of this peak. It's stunning, like right next to the peaks. So it was really, really beautiful. And I'm like, oh, this is, this is pretty good. It's not bumpy at all. It's really good. And then all of a sudden, like, all of us heads hit the roof, like, boom, boom you know, bang, oh. like, oh, like, oh, okay. And then there was another one, oh, and like, okay, breathe, just keep breathing. It's okay. Just look at the horizon. <laughs> and then the pilot came on. He goes, this, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call mountain waves. So the the, what the air hits the mountains and creates waves. Yeah. And we're sort of, we're riding those waves down the other side. And as soon as he put that in my head, I'm like, oh, okay, so we're surfing. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. It's just in a tin can at 4,000 feet above. What could possibly <laughs> go wrong? No. So it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. But uh, yeah, sometimes the ride home's a bit bumpy. But if you concentrate out the window, the... um the scenes are beautiful anyway, so you don't get Very too good. much. Yeah. How about yours? Yours looks like it might be in a forest somewhere. Uh, yeah. So this is uh, in the lovely Otways, which yes. is on my doorstep. So a uh, great part of the world, the uh, Otway, great Otway National Park. And that is Triplet Falls, which is uh, in a similar area to Hopeton Falls, which I had as my background a couple of weeks ago. Um great spot, particularly when you do get a bit of rain. So those falls right now would not be flowing really much at all um but when you do get a few showers and it 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 hits pretty quick too those falls really kick off and uh yeah flows down uh, all the way down through the otways you get these awesome waterfalls and that's triplet falls you can access it with a relatively easy walk uh, a few boardwalks and stuff uh, national parks have put in and uh the lookout um we're talking about this off air it's one of those lookouts that it's a bit tricky because the the falls are more obscured than they are in view but uh, you'll notice that it actually makes for pretty much the perfect background as I come back on seat. It so does. I'm just like right where where the trees are. So yeah, well, you, you, waterfalls. You purposely framed it that way, no doubt. That's right, because I knew I'd be using it as mm. a background here on the show. That's what I do. Every shot I do now is how will this look as a background on the show? Yeah. Um, if you want tech specs, it's actually shot on a Nikon D fifty three hundred. I took this quite a while ago. Right. Um, with a Sigma, geez, 10 to 20. This is the, the camera that we gave away on the channel last that's year. Right. That's right. And, and uh, the lens that was cemented to the front of the camera. That's right. And uh, David mm-hmm. Clark, Froggy, uh, yeah, that's I right. sent it over to him in Tasmania. Actually, mm-hmm. he won it. So, uh, And you're looking at circular polarizer. I'm going to say I shot that at around F11. Uh, and Half the a second, Pol maybe. gave me that beautiful poppy green on the... Mm-hmm. On the on the foliage there, and of course yeah. enabled me to slow the shutter down a wee bit to get a bit of movement on the water. It's a fairly, yeah. fairly traditional sort of exposure for a waterfall. If you're not using a circular polarizer on your landscape photography, why the hell not? That's right. You should give it a go. You should give it a go. Go buy one. They're not stupidly expensive. At the very least, give it a go. If not, give use it, it all the bloody time. Yeah, that's good. I like it. Um, it's not a drone shot. You didn't put the drone up or something like that in the national park. Cameron, please. Oh, so. Uh, Cameron, what's our first topic for discussion? Uh, which one are we picking? Uh, the first one that's there. Okay, yes. I, I, this one came up. I've seen a few shots around lately, and you see them all the time. And you look at it and you go, 
all right, I'm calling bullshit. There's no way that flower was in the front of that frame <laughs> or, you know, oh, there's, you know, there's a perfectly p- placed object of something that you're like, there's no way that was naturally there. So yep. the topic is, should you place items in your landscape scenes to make it more interesting? Now, I've got a classic story to tell and it's it's going to get me in trouble because we still, this person I'm going to mention, uh, we still have an issue with this. It's a, it's an ongoing feud. Um <laughs> But this is a classic example of putting stuff in your scenes that makes it more interesting. So there's a story, uh, Liffey Falls, a bit like your one behind, a beautiful set of waterfalls here in Tassie. And I was doing a workshop with Seng Ma, a good friend of the show, Seng, who runs uh, venture uh, photography tours out of WA. Uh, jump on, have a look if you want to go. He goes to India, he goes overseas, he goes to these amazing places. Uh, lovely guy, does great workshops. But... I think I caught him putting something in his scene to make it look more interesting at Liffey Falls on one of our workshops. And I came down and I had half the group at one little bit of the falls and he had the other half down the bottom. And I came down and there was this beautiful fern, like the fern behind you, like one of those fern prongs, just sitting in front of the waterfall, like on the rocks, just where the water was cascading. And I walked straight up. I said, bullshit, that was not there. That that has been put there. You found it on the side. You've moved it into your frame. And he's like, no, I didn't. And I'm like, eh. and one of the customers like, <laughs> to- totally threw him in the deep end so i picked up the fern and i threw it out of his scene i said that's i said you don't do that that's cheating you know and wow did we get into a debacle we uh <laughs> there's no cut lunches thrown but he from all reports he's still not happy about me doing that and uh <laughs> and i'm to this day saying i'm still not happy he put the fern in his shot and he took the fern out so what are your thoughts brendan should you or could do you personally are you one of these people that will put things in your scene to make them look interesting or do you um, try and shoot them how you found them? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I have done it before. I've got a, a hand on heart, be very honest and say that I have done it before. In fact, one of the photos that I did it with was published in the Herald Sun. <laughs> oh, no. uh, so yeah, I think I've told this story before on the show. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, remind me. I can't remember. Yeah. So it was, um, it was quite a while ago. Jeez. Maybe, maybe, uh, 12 years ago. Yeah, it would have been because my son was actually, goodness me, 14 years ago. Um, I was uh, on a bit of a road trip with the fam, very young fam at that time. And I had my boy Harvey was in my backpack. So we had one of those back harnesses, you know, that you carry yes. a baby around him. So yeah. he was sitting up in there and the sun was setting. We we're at a place called Yanaki, which is um, just to the north of Wilson's Prom, just before you enter Wilson's Prom National Park, Yanaki, Y A N A K I. And, um, Yes. Yep. Beautiful sunset was happening, and but the beach was pretty boring. It was just a right. you know a, just a line of beach. I was looking for foreground. There was nothing in the foreground. Beautiful colours. Yeah. So I looked up to my right, and here's a upturned little fishing boat, like a little. Oh, like a little I think I do remember this story. Yes. Yeah, yes, like a little yeah. punt. Yes. And I'm sort right. of looking around. I'm like, oh, that'd be nice if that was if it looked like that was just landed on the beach. So of course I went over and looked at it. It was so small. It was, and I sort of picked it up. I was like, oh, I can flip this over. So I just flipped it over, dragged it into position, framed up my shot, got the shot, flipped it back up the right way, dragged it back where it was. Mm. Um, and then took credit with the Herald Sun. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't have an issue with yeah. where I where I do draw the line, I would say, though, is just is obviously disturbing foliage in a national park. I mean, you're not yeah, to yeah. do that. You don't do that. That's Yeah, I mean, yeah, and that's, that's, that's not what happened. Like... That's not happened with our one. We're saying that was it was just a bit of fern that was on the ground. Yeah, look, but but breaking off stuff that would be an absolute no no. Oh yeah, no no none of that. I mean, I've 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 been known to to stage the odd image, but I'd, I'd say it's more of a exception than a rule for me. Mm. Um, I reckon I will tell you what was was brilliant at uh, when we we're at Mount Field National Park uh, yes. earlier. Well, sorry, this is last year now. Goodness me, where does the mm. time go? Nearly a year ago, Cam, can you believe that? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, and of course, we were there in autumn and, and all the fungi. So there was little toadstools and mushrooms all over the place. And the amount of times where they just weren't quite in the right spot. Yeah. You know, and it's like you just wanted to move them, but of course you can't. They're rooted in place for one. Yeah. And two, you'd be destroying, you know, so I would never do anything like that. But um, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I know I can't justify people doing that. I will say though, you know, if I'm traveling, let's say, let's say, for example, I go to Canada 
in in the autumn, which is world famous for its autumn colors. Yeah. Uh, You know, and I'm at a famous waterfall, for example, and, you know, it was looking fantastic. And I had the perfect composition, but there was a rock in front of me and it just was killing my comp. Would I pick up um, a leaf off the ground and sit it on the rock? Maybe. Yeah. Um, I'd probably (laughs) exhaust every other avenue first, though. I'd probably keep looking for compositions to try and get it. The point I'm making here is, you know, I may never be back there again to take that scene. So yeah, I'd be yeah. very tempted to 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 set stuff up. Yeah. Um, I'm not I'm not against it. I've got to say I'm not against it. Um, but yeah, there's a line. There's there's yeah. definitely a line. I say I I I, I do what you want with your own photos. That's the thing. I like what I say means nothing, yeah. and people go do their own thing, and I do my own thing. That's fine. What I love about landscape photography, and this is where I sort of get my 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 knickers and a knot about it a bit, is that to me, landscape photography is about trying to find those just perfect moments yeah. with with absolutely zero interruption from us. And and that's where sometimes, you know, like that, you know, you're talking about Canada and that rock, you know, yeah, it would be great if there was autumn leaves all sprinkled over that rock. Yeah. But if there's not, like that to me is, okay, where's the challenge? How do I, how do I yeah. find that spot that works yeah. and doesn't work? I find that some people get a little bit, I think it's a bit of an addiction as well. I think a lot of people find <laughs> yeah, it. They yeah. they do they do it once or twice and they go, oh well, that's fine. That looked really good. Well, it's easy, I, isn't it? It's easy. I can just put stuff in every shot now. And no, you know, you, they come away. Oh, I walked into the you know the bloody whoop whoop and went into these mountains and found this amazing composition with this you know whatever. I'm like, but you didn't. You walked into the mountains, yes, and then you made you made a scene up. You yeah. made a studio. You know, you made your own studio work for you. Yeah. So to me, you know, like I said, do what you like, but. Every now and then I see a few things flick up on my socials and like, oh, there's no way that was perfectly placed like that. Yeah, um, but the 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 thing is though, Cam, um, unless you're told otherwise, you got to take their word for it, right? Well, that's true. That's true. Yes, <laughs> I mean, unless true. you're told otherwise, that's just unless how it is. Like, that's there's no that proof. I mean, you can't, you know, and and um, that's and like you said before, and I'm the same. Do what you want with your photos. Yes, yeah. total. I'm totally cool with that. Yeah. Where I have an issue is if if it's blatantly obvious. Yeah. You know, and and you don't say, oh, you know, I. So what, what does it make it any easier for you to swallow if they do admit to putting stuff in the scene, like if it was hand manipulated? Well, yeah, you know what? Yeah, it does. It, it com- yeah. like it completely changes my outlook of that photo. Then. Yeah. So, yeah. for example, so because one- you're still creating an image, right? Well, to me, yeah, like if you came to me and said, "Hey, I went to Canada, went to this waterfall." You know, this this waterfall is great. And you know what? Just to make it a bit more colourful, I put some things on these rocks in the foreground yeah. and made it look a bit nice. I'd be like, cool, that's a great vision, great artistic use of yeah. your, your own visualisation of the shot. But if you just put it up there and go, oh, how cool is this shot? And, and I look at it and go, oh, I don't know. I reckon they might have been put there. No, no, that's yeah. how I found them. No, it's not. You're, you're full of it. So I don't mind if people admit to it. Because to me, I think, to me, that's not a natural shot. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's, it's a little bit like Photoshop. Like you're adding something to a photo Exactly what I was going to say. That, that wasn't it, there. Yeah it's, yeah, it's like it's like manual Photoshop, isn't it? It is like manual Photoshop. So, yeah. which is fine, um, but I just see it a lot these days where people put up these huge landscape scenes, and straight away, like, there's no way that was there. Yeah. And it's it's like then there's this beautiful story about how they got in there, or they did this, or yeah. they did that. Yeah. And they just leave out the bit. Then, by the way, I put that gnarly old branch over the rock, perfectly lined up like a heart. Yeah. You know, like yeah. all those stupid things like that. So yeah, um, I just which is be funny, isn't it? Because mm. on the other side of the argument, or the other side of the coin, is you know, when when you genuinely do stumble on the scene, and those autumn leaves are there, or no in case, <laughs> well, yeah. that's right. The fern is mm. there. Yeah, no one believes you. So does it really matter at all? You it's know, just, it's just. I'm, I think I'm getting old, Brendan. I think I'm just getting old, and well, I guarantee you, you're getting older. I'm getting older. <laughs> um. No, I, I don't know. I may, I, maybe I'm just, I'm just a very much a purist photographer. Um, yeah. so that's such a thing where I like to just shoot things as I see them. Yeah. And that, and I think that's to me, in my opinion, I think that's the true challenge of landscape photography by just using naturally no what you've got there. Yeah. Um, I just see it more and more and more these days. And I've seen it a few times in competitions too, where like things are in the foreground where you're just like, that's bullshit. That's no way that was there. If that's yeah. if that was there, that was the luckiest find in the universe. And yeah. and, and and how yeah. many lucky finds can there be? And if it constantly keeps showing up now, yeah, exactly. I, I completely, I completely yeah, exactly. understand. I completely yeah. understand your argument. And um mm-hmm. yeah, I mean I I think also if I if I'm 
for example, you know, camped out somewhere and I'm sort of scouting for shots just close to mm. my tent or, you know, um, you know, in a, in a fairly small area, that makes it a bit more challenging as well to not yeah. do that, you know, to yeah, not start creating shots. Yeah. Um, particularly if you've got like hours to kill and you just want to get some really cool landscape shots. Well, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah, I, I again, I, I'm, I don't care. I don't mind if people do that. Do they have to tell me that they did it? Maybe, but will I ever know either way? Probably not. So no. it's sort of a moot point in the end, isn't it? Mm. So Yeah, that's just me um, being grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> not, not at all. You, uh, never. Come never. Um, um, do you know, have, have you ever heard of the the very, very famous uh, American comedian Stephen Wright? Yeah, Mr. I don't have any emotions and I just talk like this the that, whole time. That's him, yeah. 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 He, yeah. Uh, he, uh, he had a brilliant joke about photography. Did he? Yeah, he said, I went to a friend's place and uh, there was all these photos on the fridge and he pointed to one of them and said, oh, that's a photo of me when I was younger. And I said to him, aren't all photos of you when you're younger? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. I love it. I love we're, that we're, we're a weird breed photographers, aren't we? we we're, we're definitely different. Like you look at photographers and then you compare them. To, like, musicians are always a bit weird. You know, they've always got their creative bit. Artists are a bit weird. I guess we're all weird in our own little way. But photographers, yeah. I think, are just... We're not different. Oh, there's a there's a lot going on, and 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 yeah. all you have to do is look back past the last 114 episodes of this show to show there's a lot going on. Yes. Like all the topics we talk about, it it generally, you know, it 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 it, it always sort of sums up photographers, yeah. you know, yeah. and and there's always controversy and there's always nitpicking and the, you know, it's just unfortunately it's part and parcel of human. So we're, we're both it's just good. grumpy shits then. Yeah, probably. But I don't know. I, I don't know. You like, think we're, we're really grumpy. Comment below. <laughs> well, I, I'd like to actually know what people's thoughts are on the placement of things because yeah. I, I'm sure people watching have done it, and I'm sure people watching maybe yeah. not have done it. So I'd love to know if people actually do think it's okay. Like, if you're at a if you're at a scene, are you happy to put something in that scene to maybe emphasize or you know increase the the beauty of that shot, or are you one of these people like me? We're like, eh, no, I'm not touching it. That's how I found it. That's how I leave it. Yeah. Um, I'd be interested to know what people's thoughts are on that. Yeah, me too. It'd be it'd be interesting because mm. um, I think you'd f well okay one leave a comment about what you think about it. Two hand on heart, be honest and tell us if you've done yeah. it before. Dob, dob um, yourself in. We won't make yeah. it fun of you. No, I I just I think it's an interesting topic. Um, and it's funny because it, I always keep thinking about, and it's probably because you mentioned it before, like waterfalls, mm. because waterfalls are always, you know, they're they're great to photograph. But generally mm. speaking, they've got a fairly ordinary foreground unless you can place yourself in the river or, yes. you know, which we don't recommend you do, particularly not in national parks, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, and 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 quite often you're missing out on foreground. And there's a very good YouTube photographer who only this week uh, put up a tutorial on how to blend two completely different images, like not only taken at different locations, but taken like in different hemispheres. And he showed how to blend your photos but not just to blend them, also to color balance them. Oh, good. Yeah, it was it was as it was an interesting exercise, and of course, mm. at the very end of it, he just sort of sat back and went, "So this is all cheating, and that's how you cheat." <laughs> so well, this this is the thing as well. Like again, if we compare ourselves to other arts, as we're going totally totally off topic, but that's us. If no, you no, compare no. ourselves to other arts, you know, like music's got the auto cue thing where people make yeah. their voice sound but, yeah. but but generally speaking it's still a song that has to be sung and made painters they have to paint you can't just fake paint so no, to speak but right. in photography we've we've got tools galore to oh. to make things up like we've yeah. got a complete untapped creative license about what we can do yeah um it's it's like you know same with digital design and artists like that like we can do anything and it's always accepted yeah, which rolls just eloquently and beautifully into that yeah. next topic that we wanted to talk about tonight. Because I wanted to this. bring this up purely because it's a hot topic. Um, okay. First question, though. Yes. Is she dead? <laughs> so what we're talking about <laughs> is the controversy during the week of the royal family Ooh. photograph with, um, is it Kate? Sorry, I, I'm not a royalist at all. It's Kate, right? That is Kate. Yeah, Kate Prince and the, the and the three and the th she's from Hobart. No, she's not. That's the one from uh, Denmark. Oh, sorry. So there you go. So that's how how little of a realist I am. She's not from Hobart. <laughs> no, she ain't from Hobart. That's, anyway, uh, let me start Princess that again. Anyway, that's they, Princess they put Mary. Out, 
Brent, thank you. So Kate has been under a bit of a health cloud of late, mm, and there hasn't yes. been a lot of news coming out about her condition. She's dead. Which, of course, has led to bloody speculation and, you know, the press like to hound these poor people, as we know only too well. Mm. So Kate decided to put out a lovely family photo with her and the three and the three uh, the three kids and um, a lovely oh she looks great happy Mother's Day it was Mother's Day in the UK yep. hello to all the mums listening from the UK yeah, absolutely happy Mother's Day to you for last week um, yes and then all of a sudden um, shit hit the fan the shit hit the fan big time because people started noticing that the children that had was, two fingers there was photoshopping that had been done on these images yes. And Everywhere. then the, the Associated Press put out what they call a kill on the photo where it had yes. to be taken down. Yes, that's right. And I think that was their big mistake. I think that's where, yeah. you know, by demanding that the photo get pulled, all that did was gave everything oxygen. Yep. Now, yep. now had had Princess Kate come out yep. or even William? Yeah, William, the, well, apparently he's her husband. He hasn't been, he hasn't really been defending her. That's right. But, well, okay. um, if, if they had to just come out and said, and they did actually put out a press release or a, a tweet. Well, if this is the funny thing about it, right? So I'm not a royal. I can't believe we're talking about royals on this show. This is a classic. We're going to a completely different It's, it's photography related. Uh, photography. So Princess Kate came out and said uh, something along the lines, as an amateur photographer, I also sometimes edit my images, That's blah, right. blah, 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 blah. And I've made a few mistakes I dabble here. in Photoshop. I dabble in essentially. Photoshop. Okay, bullshit on that. She's not writing her own tweets. Come on, <laughs> give, give me give me a break. So someone is getting fired over this because they've done a really dodgy Photoshop job. Um, it, yeah, it's a fu- and it's just funny how it's gone out of control. Yeah, I mean it. it they, it's definitely a mountain's been made out of an absolute mole here hill here. However, yeah. it does relate back to us as professional photographers and the photography world at large. Yes. Insofar as the ethics involved with this. Now, all the I from what I can tell, all that happened was there was a bit of cloning went on. They yep. might have merged two images because the child's smile and this one looked better than that one. Maybe, yep. Yeah, but I mean, that's all I can see. I mean, I think yeah. that's probably all that went on. The fact that it was released and released in yep. the public domain by such a high profile figure Yep. With no disclaimer whatsoever to say that the image had been manipulated, yep. that's where things start getting a bit interesting. Yes. Well, yeah. Oh, look, I I think the whole thing has been hilarious, to be honest. Yep. Like, one, she doesn't edit her own photos. Two, she didn't take the photo. Three, no. she didn't write the tweet. No. And it's just funny how it's come out. And and yeah, like I said, there's been manipulation done to it. There's fingers missing. There's wrists wrists that are off center. There's yeah shadows that are not there there's anyway the, the funniest thing was about the whole thing was that the media as they do carry on like a bunch of twats and they come on and say oh no it's the same photo from the front of this cover and when and when you when they superimpose the head over the the photo head they're like see it's classic it looks exactly the same well one everyone smiles the same so duh. yeah but when you look at it it's not actually the same head there's gaps on the chin and stuff like that so the media's <laughs> got it wrong yeah. so look it's it's a funny one, and it has caused a huge uh, poo storm for the royal family. Yeah, um, but it does. It does again. It comes back to that honesty within a photo. If they come out and said, uh, "Here's a photo of Kate uh, and the kids on Mother's Day," uh, just be aware there's been a couple of touch-ups done because the kids, one of the kids, wasn't smiling; their eyes are closed, or whatever. Blah blah blah. Yeah, it still would have caused a debacle because people would have said, "Why? Why would you release that?" But the fact that they sent it out and went, oh, here, how, how healthy does she look? She's she's all good. She's still alive. Everything's happy. And then people just went to town on it. Magnifying glasses out. Well, that's wrong. It was like 15 different spots circled. Yeah, I where saw that. Went, 15 different 15. Areas, which is like, amazing to me that, that an image can make it a publication <laughs> with well, 15 how, errors. But how can you take a simple portrait and have 15 errors you've got to fix? Yeah, well, that's right. I'm sure this is why I'm calling BS because I'm sure Kate didn't get the photo back and go, well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 15 things I need to fix on this photo. No yeah. way. Yeah. And it was funny because um, I think it was uh, the Petapixel guys or one of those publications decided that they would try and work out what camera it was taken with. And and they've published that they think it was done on a Canon 5D Mark III. Right. Um, which is interesting in itself because that's, that's an old, uh, quite an old camera now and quite, yeah, but they haven't got money to throw around on. Uh, no, camera, they, this yeah. is true. This is true. Yeah. So, um, 
yeah, it was uh, it was just interesting. And and but the, the reason I wanted to bring it up was was because what we touched on in our first topic was the ethics behind it. And mm. um, you know, we keep talking about not wanting AI to take over. We keep talking about you know that there should be some control over yeah. uh, images. For example, the um the the writers' strike that happened in in Hollywood. Um, was solved when a contract was signed. Well, if an agreement was reached that you know these actors won't be duplicated by AI or dupl- their yeah. likeness can't be manipulated by AI and all that sort of yeah. stuff. So you know, and that's a that's a multi like billion dollar agreement. You know, yeah. So that actors can keep getting paid. Mm. W- where's that? Where's that agreement for us photographers? Like, where you know, when when you look at things like AI, and in particular the new Sora AI, which is now um, AI for video, and right. good goodness me, it's amazing right. what what it can do. Um, you know, all these all these people that are, that rely on photography for their living, it's 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 yeah. it's done. Cool. It's dunsky. Well, we, we've been banging this drum for over a year now. Oh, of course we have. We well, made a T-shirt. I made a T-shirt. I did. I actually posted something the other morning, which was quite funny. It said, good morning to everyone, except those photographers who are into AI photos yeah, and contests. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, that could be a T-shirt too. Yeah. Um, but AI, look, it's got some great things in it. But as with everything, it's something that's got powerful tools to it. People are going to use it to manipulate what they want and try and make money out of their photos and whatever. And Yep. I don't know. I just think we're, we're just no, we're slow, was... we're slowly we're slowly going down this dark road we didn't want to go down. Yep. And every now and then, I, look, I actually think the first thing I thought of when I looked at that royal photo that you spoke about, I didn't look at, I didn't think about the the adjustments I made. The first thing I looked at, I'm like, they all look like their AI. Their eyes look funny. Their eyes yeah, look different. I, and you know what? I I I don't know. I saw it pop up on something and didn't give it a second look. And then I then I saw Photoshop to manipulate. Okay, I'll have another look at the photo. Yeah. And you're right. I thought the same thing too. Yeah. So there was some weird shading going on and weird lighting and stuff. And it was yeah. Just, anyway. Yeah. Whatever. But um, yeah, AI, AI is here to stay. We can't do anything about it. But well, it's it's one. It goes back to that that saying or what it, quote saying whatever it is. And we we've gotten so tied up with whether or not we could, we stop to think about whether or not we should. Should yeah. And um, sorry, the genie's out of the bottle. We know. But this, so. but the thing about photography, and I, I think there's a lot of ethics that should be in photography and morals. That people should have in photography, and the, the the bottom bottom line is with us whether or not we use it or not. Yeah, like if you go and deliberately AI an image and enter it into competitions to try and win a prize money, then I'm sorry, but you're you're probably not the greatest person in the world to do that because you're manipulating a photo to try and manipulate a win. That's right. So the the, the buck stops with us. If if AI is here to stay, then okay, use it for where you might want. It. Like I, I use it for a bit of sharpening and noise reduction. I've got no problem doing that, but I don't try and content aware things or change no, things or, no. but the decisions on us as photographers, if do we want to keep this thing we love as pure as we can with a few little tools to help, or do we just want to purely go down the line of just press a button and see what happens? Yeah. I, I think I said this in like episode three, that there, there's, there should be a new category of art and that is digital yeah. art. Yeah. It's digital areas. art. It's not photography. If you haven't captured it, you know, analog, yeah. if you like, on, and I understand the irony there. Yeah. If you, you know, if you haven't caught it in real world, then it's not a photograph. So it yeah. needs to have its own category of digital art. Um, mm-hmm. But unfortunately, those lines have been way too blurred for far too long, and yeah. we can't put the genie back in the bottle. So yeah. that's right. It is what it is. So it's interesting. I, I. I yeah, I love talking about it with other photographers as well and just getting other people's points of view and mm. perspective on that sort of stuff. Um, I think for me, I'm kind of lucky in what I do because I'm based you know, in a tourist town in Ocean Grove and I sell a lot of landscape photos of Ocean Grove. Well, what am I going to do? Photoshop mm. in the 12 Apostles on Ocean Grove Beach? Like people... Hey, Here's a thought. Do it. Do it. Canvas it. Put it in your front window and see if you sell it. Yeah, that's right. Someone will go, oh, that's amazing. Um, yeah. What, you know, what lenses did you use for that? Yeah, that's right. It's 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 Ocean Grove. Like people are going to look at it and go, uh, "Hang on, that yeah. tree's not there. That sun doesn't or, set there." Like you'll get called out on it. I might put like Loch Ness jumping out of the ocean behind me. Or something that's like a that. good idea. That's a very good idea. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, episode three, as you mentioned it, yeah, uh, two years ago, it was uh, what landscape photo equipment do we use? It's had over almost six hundred views. It's pretty that's good. Me. There you go. That's not bad. I just looked at some of our. Uh, geez, we look younger. <laughs> well, we should. Because every sure. photo of you is, is younger. younger. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, um, awesome. 
Awesome. Um, I think we'll maybe hold on that next topic. Yeah, definitely. For next week. But uh, quick, I just wanted to quickly touch on that. There's a $100 million lawsuit between photographers happening in America at the moment. Yeah, which, which we might, we makes, might. Me, makes me laugh so much. <laughs> America, so everyone. Um, so we don't have any gear talk. I don't know. Do you have any gear talk? No, it's funny. Um, I've, I, I, I've jumped on. I still keep in touch with DP Review because I think it's a it's a throwback yeah. to my days of you know yeah, when I was sit, getting into sitting, photography, sitting at camera house on the work computers trying to pretend busy. Yeah, yeah, and when someone walks in and they say, "Hey, what? How many megapixels is this?" Oh, uh, hang on, let me just find out for you. <laughs> it's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um and, and there was no not not a lot of gear being released at the moment, which is kind of nah, interesting. No, nah. and I haven't got a photography word of the week because I've been lazy. That's fine. That's fine. Cameron, yeah. you're a busy man. You're you're traveling all around the countryside, you're taking people on awesome tours. What um, more do we want from you? Except we do have well, before you go there, yes. Um next week I'm away or next week. I'm I'm hiking the Western Arthurs. That's bit. awesome. So I better get a guest on then. You better get a guest on. Um, I'm walking with Luke, our other guy from the Overland Track. Give it up for Luke. Luke, uh, yeah, he's hopefully going to drag me up the Western Arthurs. We've tried That's before. That's going to be failed. awesome. It could be. You know what? Go on. I could maybe do an episode from the top because apparently there's phone reception all up the top. All right. We're going to we need could... 5G. Uh, maybe. I want, I, want, I, want, I want a whole episode with you lit up by Luke's head torch. <laughs> all right. You ask, I shall receive. I'll be in touch. But yes, you may need to get a guest on. We'll find out. That's fine. We haven't That's heard fine. back from the guy we asked. We'll get there. Uh, no, one just like our jingle. No, oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah. Who's doing that jingle again? Who was? Oh, that? It's coming. Don't worry. It's, it's on its way. Are you listening, person that's doing the jingle? <laughs> I bet you are. I think they're still waiting on something from me. But anyway, that's, oh, right, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Rome wasn't built in a day, Cameron. Dear Cam. Yes. Dear Cam and Brendan. All right. God damn it. <laughs> I've recently been on a trip to Carnarvon Gorge, nice part of the world, in Queensland. Uh, was I was that? mostly happy with my shots, but I think I could have done better with extra work on my exposures. Uh, Do you really... So here comes the dear Cam. Do you really need to... Exp Exposure bracket in landscapes. That's from Mick and Toowoomba. Now, I understand why you're buying out Carnarvon Gorge, Mick, because Toowoomba is almost in that neck. Well, it's still quite a drive, well, but at least you're in the nice, right state. There's some nice waterfalls there. Oh, Carnarvon's mag magnificent part of the world. I went there mm. many moons ago, like 30 years ago. You know what? It looks a bit like Zion. Yeah, kind of. I yeah. mean, uh, well, in a much more Aussie way and lots of things that can kill you, but yeah, yeah. brilliant. <laughs> we love that. Everything is strange here. Um, all right. Mick from Toowoomba uh, in Queensland. Mick, do you Mick. need to expose a bracket in landscapes? Um, I don't myself. Um, I don't and either. I don't either. It's worth. So, there you go. So that's the answer. No. Um, I, I think it all depends on um, what you're shooting, I think, but – I think these days with the dynamic ranges of cameras, like we're talking yes. sort of 14 or 15 stops of dynamic range. I don't think you have to. Um, you do need to be uh, conscious of your highlights blowing out and losing sky or, or waterfall detail. But I think these days you can almost do it in the one shot. Um, some people like to expose a bracket just so they've got a, a spray of images they can go back and look at. Um, some people like to expose a bracket so they can blend and things like that. But yep. um I don't do any of that. Um, I would just say, just keep an eye on that histogram and keep a, an eye on your highlights, making sure they're not clipping. Yep. Uh, and then you can bring heaps of detail back in your shadows. You can do, you know, most of the times you get, get it in one shot, but yep. uh, when, when would I use exposure bracketing? Maybe if it was, like I said, a really high dynamic scene with a bright sunset or a sunrise with lots of silhouette or something like that in the foreground where I just want to make sure that I get that sky and some of the shadow details. But yeah, I think these days it's, it's pretty good what we've got with the technology. Yeah, it is. And I, I concur. But the one thing I will say is I, I think it's not a bad thing to learn how to do mm -hmm. um, just to have it up your sleeve in case you're confronted with that, you know, that epic once in a lifetime yeah. phenomenal sunrise over Tasman Island and you've got up at three o'clock in the morning to walk out and see the sunrise. That's going to get an hour earlier every time I mention it, by the way. Yeah, um, we, got, we kept walking through the night. <laughs> um, you know, and and know what it means. So yep. basically uh, you, you, you most cameras now have AEB, auto exposure bracketing, and you can set yep. how many stops of exposure mm. you can you can have, uh, I think you can get up to nine stops. And literally, if you put AEB on, you can line up your shot. You can uh, frame up your shot, get your composition right. 
and you can take the first frame, which will be correctly exposed, and then you can go and it'll automatically do one stop over, one stop under, two stops over, two stops under, three stops over, three stops under, ending with seven different exposures, including one at zero. Yeah. Um, which you can then pick the eyes out of, as Cam said. You can you've then got all the exposures covered. You've exposed correctly for yeah. the sky, you've exposed correctly for the shadows. And then if it is that once in a lifetime shot. And it's your thing that floats your boat, a bit of exposure blending, knock yourself out, make the image. Yeah. Drunk. yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay. It is, it is a, it's a cool, as I say, it's a cool thing to know how to do. Mm. You may only do it once a year. You might not even do it at all, but yeah. um, I think it's ha a handy thing to know and probably a feature inside most cameras that never gets used. Well, this is the thing as well. Like a lot, I think a lot of people go down the lines of, well, there's a feature on this camera. I must have to use it. Oh, I, I could not agree more. Yeah, and it yeah. frustrates me because they see all the buttons. <laughs> yeah. And what's, what's and it's this like, do? Well, what's it, it, do? It, it does this. It's like, well, just because it's there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's yeah. what I mean. Like people just get their cameras and go, oh, that can do this. Oh, I better do that. And then they go down and start Googling. What, why would you do this? And there's a plethora of information. Yeah. And then they come back, oh, I can do this. So I can focus bracket, white balance bracket, exposure bracket. I'll do them all at the same time. Yeah. And yeah go through a memory card in one shot but yeah like and i suppose you can focus bracket that's called focus stacking nowadays but you're supposed well you actually there's bracket. two there's focus bracking and focus stacking that's right yeah focus stacking will do it in camera focus bracking will just give you the whole lot of files yeah, but yeah, that's right so you can do it yeah there's white balance bracketing there's iso bracketing there's auto exposure yeah. bracketing yeah lots of bracketing and and more importantly than than looking at the all the settings in your camera if you if you are, if you get a camera anything from the last five years and you go into the menu and start going through that menu, it yeah. will do your head in. There oh, is yeah. Yeah. so much. Yeah, yeah. And you're exactly right in what you say. People quite often see it and they go, "Oh, here's a feature. I'm going to use that." But yeah. no, no, no. What you got to do is understand what that feature does yeah. and then yeah. when to use it. It'd That's be the same like, thing as saying, "I need to chop down that tree. I'll grab my hammer because there's a hammer there. I better use it." That's right. It doesn't work like we. I actually had a funny thing the other day up at Kakadu at uh, at Fog Dam. I was out there and it was a bit stormy. That was when I was telling you about the crocodiles. I think the last yes. episode, there's crocodiles around. And I was trying to change, turn the, what was I trying to turn the noise reduction filter off? Yep. Yeah, you know, it does have that black frame over it. I was doing like 30 second exposures, trying to get lightning, then waiting 30 seconds for this thing. And I'm going through. And I did exactly that. I went through my menu. I'm like, Jesus, there's a lot of stuff in this menu. Oh, scroll, yeah. scroll, 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 scroll. Meanwhile, I'm thinking, where's this crocodile? There's yeah. mozzies biting me. There's rain coming in the side. There's lightning out here. <laughs> um, I was with my friend Cheryl. I'm like, is she going to get eaten? No, she's okay. Like all these things going on. And I'm like, where the hell is this bloody noise reduction? And then you know what? I couldn't find it. And the storm wasn't that great anyway. I got back in the car, went back. I thought, I'm just going to check. First thing, right in front of me. Yeah. But I was under all this pressure around. That's right. Yeah. If I just knew my camera a bit better, I would have probably yeah. turned it off within seconds. Yeah. So, and that, that's where knowing your camera is really important. Um, and I say this at all my entry level workshops is, you know, it's one of the last things I say is now tomorrow night, get your camera out. I don't care if you're sitting on the couch watching mm. TV, get yep. your camera out. This is the ISO button. This is where I change white balance. This is yep. where I change this, this, that, and, and you know, and this, so that when you get your moment, and it'll you don't come, miss it. yeah, you don't miss exactly. it exactly, and yeah. and you're on, and then the pressure disappears when you know your gear. Yeah, it's like when you, it's like public speaking. If you know your subject, then you're fine. Like this show, like we have a, a, a comprehensive run sheet, absolutely, and that, that's why this runs seamlessly every episode. <laughs> like, like absolute clockwork, Cameron. It's funny, isn't it? Like people keep asking. That's one of the one things people ask me about the show. Yeah. So is it scripted? No, it is not. <laughs> why would <laughs> it be scripted? Why, why would it be scripted? How can um, you write this crap? Can, yeah, uh, that's right. Hey, I can't even do that. <laughs> that's right. Um, uh, beer donations. DSPS.com.au. Uh, I don't think that. I plugged it hard enough last week. Um, head over to the website, DSPS.com.au, where you can see loads of stuff. You can see um, old episodes. You can see uh beer donation button which is really important you can see all our workshops of course which we've got coming up um and if you feel like it jump on and buy us a beer if you want to no pressure we'd appreciate even it better, you know, even yeah. better jump on and buy a workshop <laughs> <laughs> that's right even and, better. We'll, and, and we'll buy you a beer <laughs> uh, so beer donations this week it's been a bit quiet on the beer front it's that's uh okay. that's all right uh, mallory's back she's donated another i mean he's donated another one thank you mel thank you mel um, thank you for telling me why, Mel, actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
There's no secrets on this show, Mel. There's not. Well done, uh, Mel. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, and like we said, the workshops. Yes. Um, are we telling people about the Mallee workshop, Cameron? Yeah, we can, yeah. The Murray Mallee workshop, which was set to go in October. Hopefully yeah. no one's going to get disappointed about this, but yeah. we're gonna, we haven't had anyone book in, which is good. Bad, good, but you know. Yeah, um, it's, you'll see why it's good. You see, but we're going to move that back into March 2025 just to yes. – uh, that part of the year for Brendan and I was just becoming a little bit stupid with uh, yes. the amount of things we're doing. A bit crammed. Uh, a bit crammed. So we thought to give you guys the best of us where our eyeballs are not hanging out on our cheekbones and we're, we're over workshops, we're going to push it back to the 28th of March, did we say? Yep. 28th of March to the 1st of April, I think it was, yes. uh, next year. So 2025. So 2025, yeah. 21st to the – yeah, sorry. Where am I? Yeah, yep. you know what I mean. 28th. We'll put out there. Yeah, 28th to the 1st of April. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, but that'll be updated on the website before this episode yes. goes out. But yes, um, which is linked it, in the description as well. Yeah. I think it just gives people a bit more time to plan. But it also, yeah, it was going to get a bit crazy for us at that time of year, which we don't really want to do that. We're not in this business to get busy, are we, really? No, no. We, we have said about this little show from the get go the moment it feels like work, we stop doing it. So, yeah. uh, and yeah. it certainly still does not feel like work. So, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, coming up, I've got this uh, golf course that I'm photographing, and I'm oh, having yes. an absolute ball doing it. It's really surprised me. I pun, pun intended. Yeah, true. I went out there again with the with the long lens and chasing some cool shots, and so far so good. I'm really happy with the results. Uh, tomorrow yeah. night, I'm doing the greens from the air with the drone. So oh. that'll be fun. So I'll go not, out and shoot not, all the greens. Not having a chopper. Get to the chopper. No, the I'm chopper. going to do it the uh, the nice and quiet way and not wake all the neighbours or keep the neighbours up all night and just get my drone up instead and sound like a giant mosquito. So when you're doing that, are you do excuse me, are you doing that afternoon light or morning light, did you say? Or? Well, I ideally would like to shoot it uh, around midday, um, midday with less okay. less shadows. Uh, shoot it because I'll be doing it straight down. Right. It, these are right. literally bird's eye view straight down on top of the green. Yes. Um. So the less shadowing, the better for those kind of shots but yeah. then for the more inviting ambient shots then i've already shot uh, quite a good series at sunset right um the ocean grove golf course basically the majority of it faces west faces the sunset right. so yeah. i mean the holes run north south but yeah off to the west is where the view is if you look to the yeah. east you got the town of ocean grove and a few hills which sort of obscure a yeah. sunrise, so it really lends itself to sunset shooting. But as I say, shoot the aerial stuff straight down at the middle of the day. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, and also the video flybys of each hole as well. So right. um, that'll be, I don't know if I'll get into that tomorrow, but it'll be certainly something that we do. Probably looking to get a bit of rain on the course. The greens look yeah. fantastic, but the fairways are starting to brown off a qu quite a bit. I was just thinking that. Will, will you touch up the fairways and greens? And um, there'll be a couple of spots where we'll just need to because they've got ground under repair, which is the same yeah. with all golf courses. They're always bloody digging up stuff and putting in yeah. irrigation and all this sort of stuff. So there'll be a yes. bit of touch-up work, but... Yeah. The majority of it will be shot, the aerial stuff will be shot when it greens up a bit. So okay. hopefully, fingers crossed, we get our normal autumn rains that we tend to get here. Are and, you gonna uh, do are you gonna do some cool fly through the trees and sort of no like you know when it comes and no? Oh uh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe you should. Yeah. That'd be cool. Obviously. And then we've actually we're shooting in the clubhouse as well. So um nice. we're doing a few just gonna do a few shots. Um you know, of the meals that they serve there and, you know, a few shots of some cold beer, which I might have to sample, all that sort of stuff. Surely you'd get some for free, wouldn't you? I totally digress. Cameron, you're off to the southwest again. I think we already said that. Yes, I am. Uh, tomorrow I head off. Uh, another little two-night, three-day camp down to the southwest. Tomorrow, which is three days ago. Yeah, I'm back already. Yeah, how was it? Right. It was great. Yeah, I had a great the time. Magic some great of, shots. The magic yep. of YouTube and the inter interweb. We could almost do another episode later this week for next week if you wanted to. <laughs> Um, oh, goodness me. Goodness. Um, so yeah, I'm off to there. Um, really looking forward to it. It's a really good trip. Um, yep. so far oh, the photos you got the first time around were crappy. Uh, but it's every, every trip is the same. Like every time we go there, it's something awesome happens. So, so this is, this is the one that you reckon I have to come on with you. Yeah, I think you do. Um, okay. right. if you, we, we can share a tent. That's okay. Or a, a glamping tent. What I am doing this time though, because I've got so many awesome customers coming, um, Usually on this trip, I get couples. So usually there's a photographer in it because it's a short trip. 
there's a, a husband, husband or wife who wants to do photos and the other partner just comes along for a couple of days off and they share one of the, there's three double bed uh, glamping tents. This trip is all single people. <laughs> so that means that I don't actually get a glamping tent. I'm actually camping in the forest where we are, which is okay. I don't really have to, happy to do that. But it's the first time I'm like, oh, I don't get a nice little cabin. That's okay. I'll take one for the team type of thing. Yep. Um, but it, it is a great um it's a great trip and uh, lots of fun. And uh, the guys that run at Par Avion, uh, the camp guides, they're just legends. So I think we've got the same guys we had a couple of weeks ago. So we had Brilliant. a lot of laughs. Yeah. So looking so forward get, to that. You'll get to ride the light plane roller coaster again. Yeah. I, I know a couple of the pilots that I didn't, the pilot last time I didn't know, but hopefully tomorrow we'll get one because, um, yeah, it should be fun. And then um, I get back and then I'm off to Queenstown. Yep. to do a little bit of a secret mission photo shoot for my, my good friends at Tourism Tasmania. Yeah. Asterix. Um, Back in that, the good books. Nice. Well, I, maybe. I don't know. I've been <laughs> asked to do a photo shoot. Um, and it's really cool. It's um, Tassie Tourism do what's called the off-season. So it's like all the winter tourism attractions in, in winter down here in Tassie. Yep. And there's one out on the West Coast that I've been asked to come and do a couple of workshops for in the winter. Uh, but awesome. we're going to do it, go out tomorrow on Friday and do a promo shoot for it. Um, but it gives us access to some really cool behind the scenes thing of a very popular attraction out there. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Watch this could space. Be, could be pretty cool. Yeah. Will be. Very good. All right. Nice. Is well, it? you enjoy yourself in the Southwest. Stay safe out there. I, I might send you a GPS message from the middle of nowhere. Lovely. That would be great. Um, congratulations to Tasmania on getting their AFL team, yes. which was announced tonight before we went to air. Yes. The Tasmanian. Now, it's interesting. It's Tasmania <laughs> Devils, not Tasmanian Devils. Yes, I saw that. Everyone's well, saying why? the same. Why? Because it's Tasmania. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know why. Um, There's obviously, is, is that the copyright thing? No, but Warner Brothers gave the okay for it. So, okay. Um, I'm not too sure if that's just a... Why does an American company own the rights to the Tasmanian devil, for Christ's sake? That is a very, very good question. I don't know. They also own Vegemite, so what's it matter? Do they? Craft. Not Warner Brothers. And no. <laughs> that's <laughs> not Warner Brothers. An American all... company owns Vegemite, oh, I think. That's, I'm like, why the hell would Warner be with you? Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, hopefully it'll change um but we'll have to wait and see but um cool it's going to be fun i've already signed up as a founding member Very and nice. so i'll be i'll be joining I'll, i don't actually i used to be a member of hawthorne but i don't anymore mm -hmm. but I'll, I'll actively support this team i'll still go for hawthorne but it'll be yeah. good to have a second team and i fun. will most definitely be coming down when the demons take on the devils oh in, yeah uh, demons it already sounds like a rivalry doesn't it it does that'd be cool yeah. won't it yeah, yeah. so i um, looking forward to that mm. uh this has been episode 115 of the Down South Photo Show. Thanks for listening along. We yes. will catch you for episode 116, possibly next week, maybe the week after, but who knows? Um, yeah. Tell you enjoy what, yourselves. We'll, we'll come back on here when we reach 800 scubs. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Until then, we're not coming back on. Uh, enjoy yourselves and happy photography, everyone. See you. Bye. Happy photographer, Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> ha happy photographering. Right. Photographing. Okay. Yeah. What a way to finish that episode. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.